Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five here at Broadway.com. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're here with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And a wonderful actor, yes, actress, is absolutely. with us. Lisa O'Hara is here from Ooh. the height of the storm yes. at Manhattan Theater Club. Very exciting. Very exciting. We love Lisa. We will get to her. But first, our top five. You guys now have an even more time to experience this once-in-a-lifetime theatrical concert <gasps> event. Yes, look, Ooh, look at, at that. Her, quoting look at the that. talking head. Selling it. We're talking about David Byrne's American Utopia, of course. Um, and it has received a month long extension here on Broadway at the Hudson Theater. So if the show was originally announced to run through January 19th of 2020, but now you have four extra weeks to head over Ooh. to the theater to see it. It will now conclude its engagement on February 16th of 2020. So you can take a Valentine's Day date to see oh. David Byrne's American Utopia. Look at that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, previews of this show began on October 4th. It officially opened not too long ago on, the, on October 20th. On Sunday. And a cast recording was just released a couple of days ago on October 22nd. So mm -hmm. there's so much David Byrne American Utopia for you to experience. Take advantage. Mm -hmm. I have something to tell you. October Please. 22nd was yesterday. Oh. Was it I yesterday? Know. I know. A couple of days ago. Everything just <laughs> flying by. We don't even know where Guys, we're... I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and now I need to look up how to say I am very sad in Yiddish. Oh. I don't know how to say I'm very sad in Yiddish. Do you? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. We're a little upset. Verklempt. We're a little verklempt. That means like, you know, mm -hmm. a little emotional because the Yiddish Fiddler has announced its final performance. <laughs> oh, there's some tears it's over a, here. It's such a it's beautiful, beautiful production. It's a beautiful oh, production yeah. directed by the legendary Joel Gray at stage 42. It will close on January 5th, 2020. What a run what, it's had. What a run. Like, run. yeah, absolutely. Steven Skybell leads the production and as Jackie Hoffman, who plays Yanta, said, best Tevya yeah. Evia. Yeah. Mm. And that's, that's what she said. <laughs> and well done. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And it's a good day to be the wrong man. Well done. I see what you're Maybe even the right yes, day. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe even the right, right day, day to be the wrong man. It's, it better. received um, another extension. I believe this is the show's second extension. This is also its final extension. Um, but it will now play through November 24th um, at the MCC Off-Broadway Theater. This is Ross Golan's world premiere musical. It is based off of his concept album. Um, I just saw it recently and loved it. The music is amazing. Good be review. It began performances on September 18th at officially opened on October 7th. Um, and if you're completely unfamiliar, it is set in Reno, Nevada, where Duran, Joshua Henry, who is amazing, is a man just scraping by, is accused of murder, and says and he says he didn't commit it, and then you watch the events unfold. It's absolutely phenomenal. So yes, you have until November 24th to go see The Wrong Man, directed by Tom Scale, starring Joshua Henry. And today we found out who's going to the ball at Paper Mill Playhouse. Oh, we've got a fabulous cast. Oh, Cinderella, Cinderella at Paper Mill Playhouse in Melbourne, New Jersey. Ange Ashley Blanchett will play the title role. Mm. Christopher Sieber, who we love, will play Sebastian. <sighs> D. Hody as D. Hody. Madame. Yes. That's how they Come say on. it. Madame. Billy Harrigan Ty as Topher. Oh, yes. Who has another very important mm -hmm, role? Mm -hmm, Donna mm -hmm. English as Marie. Rose Hemingway. Remember Rose Hemingway? I do, Hot absolutely. Succeed. Very love talented her. as Gabrielle. Andrew Cober as Jean Michel. Angel Lynn as Charlotte. Michael Wayne Wordley as Lord Pinkleton. Wow, it's what a cast. Such a good, yeah. great, great no cast. Kidding. Directed by Mark S. Hobie, who is also the artistic director at Paper Mill Playhouse. Uh, it's scheduled to run from November 20th through December 29th. That's some great holiday fare. It is. I love that music. It's so good. Yes, and this production of Avita is getting even more life over across the pond. That's right. We are talking about Regions Park Open Air Theaters Avita. That is a mouthful. <laughs> and it will be moving to London's, uh, I believe it is Barbican? It is Barbican. Barbican Theater. This is a great production. It is. Yeah, this has been, it, it has been revered. So much as director Jamie Lloyd, who is hot, hot, hot right Represented now. Represented on Broadway by Betrayal. Absolutely. Um, so it will play the Barbican Theater for a limited engagement. It will begin Jan June 20th. 27th of 2020 and will play there August 
through August 22nd of 2020. Um, the cast is led, the cast was led uh, by the Broadway Six star who's coming in, Samantha Pauly. She was in the title role of Evita. It also had Trent Saunders as Che and Hector Rivera as Juan Peron. But casting for the Barbican run will be announced at a later date. But because it's far away. It is far away. But yeah, this is a tremendous production of the show. So you should absolutely seek it out if you're over there or planning a trip across the <laughs> pond, you know. Um, some other things on the site. Robin Herder, who's in Moulin Rouge and who we love so, so much, sat down with Paul for an episode of Show People with Paul Montoric. She's fantastic. Uh, so check that out. Mm -hmm. Spencer Clark of Frozen. He uh, was a gotta dance. You're, you're giving a wave. Yeah, you were he there. He is amazing. Yeah. There's yeah. a photo. He has a lot to say about cats. He has he a does. lot to he say does. about cats. Well, and, you know, that's, you know. Uh, and also <laughs> photos of the cast of Will Eno's The Underlying Chris. You can check those out as well. That's at second um, stage. Yes, absolutely. There we go. But um, don't go anywhere right now. Go nowhere. Stay right where Stay you where are. Stay where you are. Lisa O'Hare will be joining us. Ryan, thank you. My pleasure. Yes, Caitlin, absolutely. please tell us about our guest. Gladly. Yes, we've got Lisa O'Hare here with us today. She is currently in In the Height mm. of the Storm on Broadway. You may have seen her when she was in The Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. She was in Mary Poppins in the West End. She was in Austin's Pride in New York. She was Eliza Doolittle on tour. She's done it all. And she's here, and we're going to talk to her all about it. Make sure you follow her on social media at Lisa underscore O'Hare underscore. Don't forget the second underscore. And leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Lisa and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Welcome, Ooh, Lisa. Thank you. It's so fancy here. I'm so we're, excited. We, you're fancy. Thank we you. We invite the fancies <laughs> <laughs> to our studio. Well, first of all, congratulations on the height of the storm. Thank you. It's a gorgeous production and so moving. Mm. So moving with Eileen Atkins and Jonathan Price. Yes. First of all, tell me about working with those two. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's my first straight play, actually. I've done yeah, musical, musical. theatre since, you know, I was 18. And this, and I've been wanting to do a straight play forever. And so for it to be on Broadway with that cast is just bonkers. Um, and it's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's like a masterclass in acting every night, really, being on stage with them. They play your parents? They do. And you're rather French with British accent. Yes, we are. Yes, it's a French play. Um, but yeah, it's been adapted and it's now in, in, it's, it's slightly different, I imagine. I've not seen the French production, but um, it takes on a slightly different form in an English accent because we're a little bit more apologetic than the French, aren't we? You know, the French are they're they're just so much sorry. cooler you than we are. Them. I mean, it just <laughs> has to be said. <laughs> well, speaking of cool, this set is pretty cool. Because you're in this sort of country house mm -hmm. somewhere outside of Paris. Yeah, this sort of little apartment. It's it's really beautiful, this, and it's so detailed when you're on when you're on stage. Everything. It's sort of it's like being on a set on a movie set. The detail that's in, on the set is, is beautiful. I love when that happens. Yeah. Tell us a secret that's on there that we might not see from the. There is audience. an old band aid or plaster, if you're English, um, <laughs> on, in the kitchen, which slightly grosses me out every night when I go over there to do the chives and I'm cutting the chives. And I was, I, I only noticed it about four performances it's ago. It's not and I was like, like a stage hand is... left it there. It's actually Oh, there. well, maybe. But because I have only just noticed it. But it's sort of like, I don't know, Madeline maybe cut her finger while she mm. was in the garden doing her vegetable gardening and she came in and there's then she just discarded it. There's a lot of and cooking it. and you never know what could happen. You know, there's lots of knives involved in our show. So you need Band-Aids. <laughs> now, one of the credits that Caitlin didn't mention mm -hmm. is New Amsterdam. Yes. Yeah. And which in which you are American. Mm. You have to be American. I'm American. I know. <laughs> It's and fun. you have a shocking trajectory in your story. I don't we won't spoil if you're not caught up. Yeah, it is. It's been oh, it's it's been such a wonderful ride on that show. I mean, first of all, I wasn't pregnant when I begun. Then, right. I, but I was pregnant in the show. Then I got pregnant. So then we sort of got rid of the fake belly and then I grew a real belly. And so I've never been on a show where I've had such a sort of personal connection with it. Then I gave birth to my daughter. And then, of course, you know, the baby was born um, on the show. And so then it I, tracked. It was your actual belly at one point? It was on the my show. actual belly, oh. yeah. So it was really amazing. And then I went back two weeks postpartum to film the two yeah weeks. two weeks two weeks postpartum <laughs> two <laughs> weeks <laughs> excuse me it was insane but um it's just honestly I love going to work there it is the best group of people um crew actors producers everyone is like genuinely amazing and it's just the most wonderful place to go to work and what twists and turns in this 
Oh, the storyline. Storyline. I, I mean, know. It's crazy. And I know. New Amsterdam Twitter is a shocking place to be because people. I'm not on there anymore. <laughs> Are you I'm not on there? On I was Twitter? once on there, and then I just I can only deal with so much social media because I'm really terrible at it. So now I'm on Instagram because I quite enjoy that. So I just focus all my energies onto that because I can't keep up. You can show off your daughters. I can show so off my forth. daughters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and maybe some spoilers with some. You know, oh yeah, up. like blood, yes. Mm. Well, we know there's blood involved. We know I don't blood. think that's it's a spoiler. Natural. I mean, there's mm. lots of blood on the show. Right. But yes, there's. The, I have one particular picture that I haven't released to the social media because it's a bit too graphic. <laughs> but when I was two weeks postpartum, I was obviously breastfeeding. My mum came to town. She was in my trailer with my two week old, and I would have to sit and breastfeed her, but with sort of like just blood and glass. <gasps> and I have this picture, and I was like. <laughs> People would, it, it's a very kind of graphic. Maybe picture. release it on Halloween. Maybe. No, maybe I not. don't think so. Maybe <laughs> I not. think it's not <laughs> a little too graphic. <laughs> Amazing. All right, I want to get back to the height of the storm. This yes. is a very emotional play. Extremely. You play, um, as I said, the daughter of Eileen Atkins mm -hmm. and Jonathan Price's characters. And you're in the reviews or in some of the descriptions of the play, they call this character a little bit self centered. Yes. Oh, she is for sure. Yeah, now, when you had a gentleman's guide to love and murder, your character was I know, a little I'm bit self I've cast a little. I can see what's going happening. On. I know. <laughs> Thankfully, we have New Amsterdam, which is the yeah, opposite. That's true. Oh, that's She's true. sort of the most selfless. Yes. But no, yeah, I love playing those characters. That's so much fun. Because <laughs> you can sort of, yeah, you can react in a way that you'd never get away with in real life. But no, she is. She does have heart. She's not. Comp she's, she's not Sabella Hallward. She's, she's not, she's not that. She's just. I mean, Sabella Hallward is slightly psychotic. But oh, this sure. character is a little. Uh, is just yeah. She she just idolizes her dad, but she's trying to balance her personal life and her home life. And for anybody that's lived away from family, it's that thing of when you go home. You can't, you, you can't just sort of get swept up in the drama of it. You just have to kind of be, you're there for two minutes, so you have to go and sort of represent and be like, everything's fine. And so <laughs> here's more about my life to sort of try and cheer up her dad. Mm. But no, I mean, it doesn't matter which way you spin She's it. She's definitely a little, a little bit, bit of a narcissist. Oh, just a, a, I mean, you a said touch it, of a narcissist. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still discovering it. It's one of these amazing pieces that every night, you know, I discover something new about either my character or what is happening or because it's so, sort of not linear, even though we have right. to think about it that way in mm -hmm. order to make sense of it for but our characters. But the timeline is blurry for the audience. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Um, and so it is. It's one of those things that you're constantly figuring out. But, um, but she's definitely the one that, uh, interestingly, I think if we were all... When it comes to grief, if you're all just sort of like, oh my God, this is the worst, it would be a little bit exhausting to watch. Yeah. So it's nice to have a character that kind of comes in and breezes through a little bit and it lightens it a little. Otherwise, I think it would be really, really heavy. I mean, it is heavy, but it is you know, we heavy, don't but all deal moving. with grief in the same way, do we? Some people just can't deal, so they don't. And other people get completely, you know, engulfed by it, so... What are you learning from Eileen Atkins and Jonathan Price? Oh, man. I think um, that they're, they're titans of the theater. I don't know how many awards they have between the two of them. Oh, we had Thousands. some quiz, actually, on, on opening on night, and I that forget. Was, that, that was our quiz. Yeah, it yes. was really cool. <laughs> I mean, I've already forgotten, but I was shocked, and I it's was like, in, wow. I, I think it's in the multiples. Oh, yeah. Multiples of multiples. It's a lot. Um, but they're actually kind of fun and cheeky and mm -hmm. cool in their yeah, way. So they tell are. me about them. Um, Oh gosh, um, they're di very different. They work in very different ways. Jonathan is has a real vulnerability about the way that he works, and it's sort of a little you're not quite sure where his performances are going to go, which is very exciting, especially um, in the context of the play because he's suffering with some dementia. And if you saw the father, dementia. this character has the same name and could be seen as a, I don't know, some other prequel. Yeah, prequel yeah. Or some, I mean, some yeah, part of that, line. right? Um, but he's 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 wonderful. He's such an instinctive actor, um, and it's it's you have to really be on your toes working with him because you're not quite sure what he's going to throw you. Oh, and I fun. love working like that. Um, Eileen is brilliant and so magical. Like everything she does, I find myself sometimes just kind of gazing at her and being like, "Okay, Lisa, you know what are you doing?" Um, <laughs> but no, she's wonderful, and she's a lot more sort of. She has a performance and she's found these extreme, she, she's crafted it so brilliantly and geniusly and you sort of have watched her do it sort of notch by notch, but it's, it's such a kind of strong performance. Um, I, I, I mean, God, I, I don't know. It's just amazing to watch them every night and, and that goes for everybody on the stage because the whole 
cast is extraordinary in their own right. Um, so I just feel very, very lucky, honestly. Well, I mean, yeah. if you're going to do a straight play, finally. You, yeah. picked, the, you picked great co-stars. I think I did quite good. Yeah, <laughs> I think I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> no, they're amazing. It's, it's really extraordinary. And you have done so many musicals. I've done a few. You've done some iconic roles. Yeah, I know, I know. You did Camelot. Yes. Mary Poppins. Yep. You played Eliza Doolittle. I did. You were in Cobra Cabana. (laughs) (laughs) I knew I could throw something at you. (laughs) You know, I was so excited when we had our opening night party at the Cobra Cabana. I was like, that was my first show. I was 18. I wore barely any clothes. (laughs) And I, you know what? If I could go back and do anything again, it would be that. I had so much fun. No, genuinely. Why? Because it was so fun. It was so fun. I it mean, it's there. not, yeah, it's just, it's fun. I was 18. I played Veronica Lake. I wore like this wig. I, <clears> you know, it was in Denmark. It was just the most bizarre, wonderful experience. I had such fun. I just didn't want to forget that important it's credit. It's very important, that credit. Yeah. I don't think it's even on <laughs> in my bio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a secret. Fun learning fact. here. All right. <laughs> I know you all have it's questions. True. I can feel the new Amsterdam Twitter coming toward oh, us. <laughs> Caitlin, yes. what are our viewers asking? Sure. Well, going off, off off of that, Alyssa wants to know, what was it like being able to return to Broadway but be doing a play? Mm. And how was this experience? Was it different preparing for it, this? Or is your mindset differently now? Yeah. I mean, versus a musical. I guess it's fun to sort of be just invested in the storyline and not have to worry so much about the vocals because as much as I love singing, I... Um, it's just, it's a really nice, refreshing change to just be sort of like invested in the story and in the character development. Um, as far as preparing for it, I was sort of thrown in a little bit because I was the new, I was the new company member. Everybody else had done it in London. So I had a lot of catching up to do. So I sort of was a bit, I worked backwards in a way because I was told where I was supposed to be and how everything was supposed to go. And then only when we got into previews did I start to unpick it and figure out why I was doing what I was doing, which is a bit of a backwards way of working. Um, But just because of the nature of the time and being new to it, we just didn't have such an extensive rehearsal period and everybody else had had a really sort of full idea of what this play was. So it's a little terrifying in that <laughs> sense. Um, but no, it's been it's been good. It's 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 nice. Nice to, to do a straight play. I'm enjoying it. I'd like more of this, I think. Did you see it before you auditioned for it or no? Or- you no, so I just you read it and fresh. I was as, just as in the dark as everyone else. I was like, oh my word. And only when it's on its feet does it start to make a little bit more sense. I think. I, I imagine it's one yeah. hard read mm. because of the blurry timeline and not knowing, and we won't spoil it, but there are some, some secrets to it. Mm-hmm, for sure. Love that. So Kelly wants to know, what is it like working with such an intimate group of people? Because it's only, there's so few of you in the cast and yeah. being on stage, what's that like? Tell us about the family. <laughs> the family. Yeah, I mean, it's fu- we have some some dynamic between us. You know, there's like, it's like a, it's exactly like a family. You know, when we sit around in rehearsal, when we sit around a dinner table between shows. There's it's kind of like sitting around with your family in a way. Um, my sister and I, um, Amanda, get on wonderfully well, and uh, we have to have some sort of tension on stage. But she's such a lovely girl, so. That's it's been that's been nice to get to know her. But everybody in their own way has their own brings their own thing to it. And it's nice to work with a small company because you get to know everybody a little mm. bit more personally. Um, yeah, no, it's been fun. It's Did been you have fun. any bonding activities to get to know each bonding other? Bonding activities. Um, Just went out for dinner. Dinners, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Birthday dinners. We've celebrated about two or three birthdays now. So we go out and we have we have these sort of family dinners, which is nice. <laughs> I love that. So Lexi wants to know, what is it like being back in New York City? Do you live here full time? They want to know what's your deal with New York. Tell us about your personal life, Lisa. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm New Yorker now. I'm well, New Jersey. New Jersey, sort of. I mean, it's not really a New Yorker, but we had to go out there. We needed space. I have two children. Two girls. Two girls, a seven-month-old and a four-year-old. So that's all of my time when I'm not doing this. I'm doing that. (laughs) <laughs> and I love it. Um, so yeah, we moved to Jersey. We're there full time. We were in LA for a, about four years, and we then I got gentleman's guides. We came here, and we've not left. We're still here, and we love it. My husband's a uh, Broadway sound guy, so he's always busy. Love that. So I think we're here for the foreseeable. I <laughs> love that. We do one more question, and Mark. Speaking of. Gentleman's guide, they want to know. I love I love gentleman guides for love and murder. I saw it over ten times. 
What is your favorite memory from doing that show? Um, I thought they were going to say, what's your favorite murder? Oh. Which you can also answer. Oh, my favorite murder. <laughs> uh, my favorite memory. I mean, I have two things that stick out. One is my favorite and one is my least favorite. My favorite memory was probably when we did the Macy's parade because it's such mm. an, I mean, such an iconic thing. And when I first came to the States, I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And I'm obsessed with Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving parade. So that was special. Um, my, the thing that stands out the most to me uh, was when I, which I shouldn't share with anybody, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Just I thing. forgot. I had this sort of patter section in the "I've decided to marry you" song, mm -hmm. the the, the, door. the farce with the mm -hmm. th with the doors, yes. um, and I had to sort of do this really quick patter section, which was like, "What am I doing here? This could be dangerous." And if you lost, if you lose where you are, then it's sort of really terrible. Um, and I just had a day and I always used to run that section before we would perform it because I got so nervous about it and I'd begun but I started with the second section said the first uh -uh. and as the words were coming out of my mouth I was like oh god no, 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 no. <laughs> um and so I sort of stopped and apparently according to Jefferson Mays I then sort of did this monologue kind of <laughs> oh, no. weird I don't even know what came out of my mouth but I'll never forget the feeling it gave me. And I just, oh, it was just horrifying. It was just the worst. Thing. And it was pretty obvious to everybody that it had gone horribly wrong. And <laughs> oh, I was no. just sort of saying, oh, no, there's someone in the other room. And I don't even know what's <laughs> coming out of my mouth. It was so horrifying. Um, I'll never forget that. I mean, I can laugh about it now at dinner parties, but I was genuinely um, no, I feel like horrified. I'm in a bit of a cold sweat just listening. Oh, to it's horrible. It's just like so black horrible. out, like black out. You're like... What happened? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. But no, that show was oh, it was lovely. I loved it. Do you Everybody keep in touch with it. all of the, all of those guys? Yes, Bryce I Pinkham do. right now is in Great Society <gasps> playing Bobby Kennedy. Yes, Broadway. we still keep in touch. I yes. Oh, I was going to tell you something about his personal life that I should not have said. Shoop. Just yes. loose lips. We overnight. are. <laughs> I know. We are in touch. He's he's a good friend. Yes, all of them are. Jefferson Mays. He he came to see the play. He came to see <gasps> the height of the storm. Uh, well, when? A few weeks ago, he was over. He's going to be doing The Music Man. I think we can say that. Yes, right? that's true. Yes, yes, yes that's true. They're only casting Tony winners in that show. I know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time, time to strive still for. Yes, 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 yes. Well, yes. thank you for joining us, thank Lisa. You. you guys go see The Height of the Storm at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater. It is a ride, and it's worth it. Caitlin, will you take us on out, please? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Raul Esparza of Seared on his birthday.